Hi folks, welcome back. Today we're going to conclude this series on solar cell tabbing with testing what we've made so far. Now in the previous videos I showed you how to make a jig to help you tab the solar cells and I've shown you the equipment to use to make this process successful. In another video I showed you how to construct this. This is a vacuum sealing heat chamber that you can use and build yourself to hermetically encapsulate these cells with EVA. Today we're going to conclude with testing it and I'm going to show you how to construct a light box. Now constructing a light box is going to help you test your cells in a consistent and reproducible way. Now you can certainly carry this outside with your multimeter shining on the sun and test it that way. The reason we use a light box, as I have said, is for consistency. All right, so let's get started. Okay, folks, before we get into the uh, testing of the cell and the construction of the light box, I wanted to briefly go over some of the physics and in particular the high energy physics of how solar cells work or how the PN junction works, how photosynthesis works and how the photovoltaic effect uh, as described by uh, Einstein uh, takes place. Now this is a busy little chart right here but I wanted to lay everything out in, uh, in uh, complete uh, detail for you so that we can discuss incomplete bonds chemistry and how this works. Silicone is a full atom. Okay, it has 14 electrons, it has uh, 14 protons, 14 neutrons. Now I'll, I'll get into this part soon. Okay, but this is an important uh, number right here. 35, 38 Kelvin. Okay, that's the boiling point of silicon. Now, as you can see, what we have here are shells. And I do apologize for what appears to be a spin on these electrons around the nucleus of the silicon atom. And we will discuss this. Now, what you see here is you see the shells, okay? And uh, most atoms, their inner shell has two. The next shell has eight. These are full shells, okay? And then we go out one more, and the silicon has four in its outer shell. Now, it is, uh, for this particular atom, this shell is full, it is complete. The incomplete chemistry bond of silicon occurs in this manner. When you put impurities in the silicon, for instance, phosphorus, phosphorus has five electrons in its outer shell. When it bonds with the silicone, there is one electron that does not have a home in the lattice, in the silicone lattice. If you, I did not do this, but as you can see, what it happens is that in the silicone lattice, these two, each one of these would share a bond with another silicone lattice of identical. Uh, configuration. With the phosphorus there is an additional electron so it's, if you can imagine, it's sort of hanging out with no real bond to the silicon. If we bond, if we dope, as it's uh, commonly referred to, the silicone with boron, as you can see there are three. And in effect, it has an incomplete bond in that it is one short of bonding with a silicone atom. I've indicated the boiling point here also. This is an important number and the uh, boiling point of phosphorus is very low. Very low. It's a non-metal. It's uh, rather reactive. Now the reason I'm going over this a little bit is because of some of the videos that I've noticed they uh, they sort of uh, either they don't understand or uh, they have an incomplete understanding of 
the high energy physics that is occurring here. Now I've seen, um, and I'll uh, take this away and show you exactly what I'm talking about right now. Okay. I've seen videos where the, the, the electrons, they're sort of just wandering around and then occasionally a photon will strike that and produce electricity. Wandering equals no, that's not how it works. And we also know now electrons spinning around the nucleus of an atom is also a no. Okay, two reasons why in physics it violates. We have what's called a conservation of mass. We also have the fact that electrons flow the path of least resistance. Now, in physics, there are four fundamental universal forces that act upon everything in the universe. Okay, there's gravity. There's something called the weak nuclear force. Now, it has a very short range, and it, as indicated uh, by its very creative name, it's weak. We have the electromagnetic force. It is strong. The electromagnetic force has an infinite range, and this is where electricity uh, comes into play, the theory of electricity. Okay, and then we have, finally, we have a strong nuclear force, and also its creative name is called strong because it is the strongest force, but it also has a very short range. All right, now, we're doing this to cause what's called an unbalanced force. Okay, a body at rest, when put into motion, becomes unbalanced. The electromagnetic force is carried by the photon. It creates electric and magnetic fields. Electrons exist in the quantum state. Okay? High electricity is formed. Oh, let me uh, let me quickly go back here. I've got this Hulk smash. Okay, when a photon meets an electron in high energy physics, they do it all the time. They break apart uh, neutrons to see what happens. Well, I'm thinking the same thing is happening here. When a photon hits an electron, it just smashes it. Now, keep in mind, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Matter exists in a quantum state, okay? When a photon races past an electron in a near miss, it generates 1500K, okay? That's where these are coming in here. Okay, the boiling point of these materials, okay, are well below the 5800K generated by a near miss of a photon past an electron. This boils the electron out of its bond. The electron is now homeless and it finds rest in a new complete bond. Okay. Attempting to balance out this silicone. Okay, so now we're going to go over some of the math associated with testing the electrical characteristics of your solar cells. We're going to be using Ohm's law in its basic form uh, as it relates to a DC circuit. Solar cells produce a DC voltage. Now, as we have here, um, this is for a um, an electrical circuit that contains a resistive load. Um, so if you wanted to know what uh, current flowing through a resistor is, then you would uh, measure the voltage. You know what the resistance is. So when you do the math, you get your current. Now, in solar cells, what we want to know more specifically is the power being generated by the uh, solar cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this pie chart here. and. Uh, to find out what the uh, watts equals power 
if we want to know what the power output of it is, we multiply the current times the voltage. So here we are doing a little bit of the math here. Okay, so what you can expect from full sun on a bright, sunshiny day is for the sun to radiate a thousand watts per square meter to the earth. Our light box is going to be a six by six to fit one cell and we're going to need to duplicate sun power is 166 watts in a meter squared. In one cell you can expect a half a volt, about 25 milliamps, and on a six by six cell most of them produce about four watts. They're always scratching for more wattage, but uh, we're going to round to four watts. How you put the, your series strings together, a couple of different uh, things to consider here. If you wire them up in series, each cell generates one half a volt. In series, the voltage add. So half a volt, half a volt, half a volt. In three cells, you're going to get one and a half volts. If you wire them up in parallel, the voltage remains the same, but the current adds. So in a three cell string, you're going to have 25, 25, and 25. You're going to end up with roughly 75 milliamps. Now we're going to get to the test equipment and the light box. All right, folks, so now, the things that you're going to need. You're going to need one of these. This is a digital multimeter. Um, you don't need a lot of fancy test equipment. Uh, this is a few dollars online. Uh, it measures voltage, it measures current, and uh, it measures uh, in a passive state, and disregard that for now. Uh, resistance. So you're going to have that handy. Now let's get to the light box itself here. And uh, this right here is what I use to test uh, a cell individually. Now um, as you can see I have, uh, I have spared no expense in the construction of this. These are actually the boxes that uh, my solar cells come in. So the size is there. So it's, it's a quick uh, reuse of something. What we have up here are four uh, light bulb sockets uh, just for the standard screw in and incandescent bulbs and I've hooked them up to a switch. When testing your cells uh, it only takes a moment for uh, this to be on so a switch made sense where you just turn it on you get your measurement you can turn it off okay and uh, inside you can see the the bulbs themselves okay now I have inside here I have white foam board uh, this is a, a good enough reflector you can use other things you could probably use aluminum foil or even white paper uh, it doesn't really matter and the reason it doesn't matter is because you're going to get a consistent test every single time so as long as you don't change your testing standard you can rely on the on the results that you're going to get um, I'll just put this together uh, and that's it okay uh, this uh, this produces 240 watts I need 166 to duplicate full sun. So this is ample right here. And that's all there is to it. Okay, and um, this is it as far as uh, solar cells, tabbing, encapsulation, things like that. Uh, I'm going to move on to another series of videos that I'm very excited about and that is a, I'm picking up where I left off on my bioplastics. Okay, uh, we're going to continue using the casting. We're going to use some other things too. We're going to use cornstarch and we're going to demonstrate these things. Now what I like to do, even though these are uh, homegrown products, so to speak, I try to uh, develop them in such a way that you gain the knowledge, but you're also making your things good enough 
uh, that can compete on a professional level. So the money is not there. The money doesn't need to be there. Uh, the creativity is what counts. So these are my ideas. I hope this has helped you. Uh, I would love for you to uh, send me pictures of or ideas of things that you've come up with and we can share them. And uh, everything is public knowledge here. We share our knowledge here and I'm happy to do so. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.